In this Blender video, I'll show you how to make this animation. We'll first make a structure with a lot of geometry, and then I'll show you how to make parts of it disappear and then reappear. I'll be using Blender version 2.90. We'll start by adding a mesh cube. Then scale it down in size by pressing S, then point 0.1, then Enter. Now we're going to add five modifiers to it. In the interest of time, I'll first add all of the modifiers and then we'll go back and set the options for them. So switch to the Modifier tab and add an Array modifier to duplicate the cube on the x-axis. Then add another Array modifier for the y-axis. Then add another Array modifier for the z-axis. Now add a Solidify modifier to give us more geometry. Then add a Wireframe modifier. Now we'll set the options for the modifiers. So for the first array modifier, set the count to 8. For the second array modifier, set the count to 8, set the factor x value to 0, and set the y value to 1. For the third array modifier, set the count to 16, set the factor x value to 0, and set the z value to 1. For the solidify modifier, set the thickness to 1. For the wireframe modifier, set the thickness to 0 0.2. Next, we'll set up a particle system. We're going to use the particles as dynamic paint brushes to temporarily paint pieces of the structure that we made. Then I'll show you how to make the painted parts of the structure disappear. For the particle system, we need an object to emit the particles from. So add a mesh sphere. Then scale it down in size by pressing S, then 0.5, then Enter. Now move it near the center of the structure. Next, switch to the Particle tab and press the plus button to add a particle system. Set the number of particles to 100. We don't want the particles to fall down, so open the Field Weight section and set the gravity value to zero. This is what it looks like when I press play. Now we'll set up the dynamic paint. So switch to the physics tab and click the dynamic paint button. For dynamic paint, we need to set up a canvas object and a brush object. This sphere is going to be the brush object, so set the type to brush and click the add brush button. For the paint value, select particle system so that the particles emitted from the sphere will be used. Then select the specific particle system here. Select particle settings. Now we'll set up dynamic paint for the structure. So select the structure and then click the dynamic paint button. This structure is going to be the canvas, so with canvas selected, click the add canvas button. In the surface section, set the surface type to weight. This will output a vertex weight group that we'll be able to use with another modifier a little later. Now add a check mark next to dissolve. We're doing this so that parts of the structure are only painted temporarily. We'll set things up so that when pieces of the structure are painted, they will disappear. When the paint dissolves, the pieces will reappear. Now we'll set the dissolve time. So open the dissolve section and set the dissolve time to 50 and remove the check mark from next to slow. Since we set the surface type to weight, now we can set it up to output a vertex group. So in the output section, click this plus button to output this vertex group. Now we'll add a modifier that will use this vertex group. So switch to the modifier tab and add a mask modifier. For the vertex group, select the group that we just added. The mask modifier allows the vertices of an object to be hidden based on the vertex group that we selected. Using this button, we can choose whether the painted vertices are the hidden ones or the visible ones. For this animation, you need to click it. We're ready to bake this now, and when we do this, Blender will save some cache files. If I save the project before baking, then Blender will save the cache files in the same directory as the project. To bake it, go to the Physics tab and in the Cache section, click the Bake All Dynamics button. If you need to make any changes after baking, 
Then click the Delete All Bakes button, make your changes, and then bake it again. I'll pause the video until it's done. Baking is done. Now when I press the play button, you can see pieces of the structure disappear as they're painted with the particles. A short time later the pieces reappear if they're not painted again. When we render the animation, the particles won't be visible but the sphere will be, so let's hide it. To do that, click the filter drop down menu and enable the button that looks like a camera. Now select the sphere and click the viewport and render buttons which will hide the sphere from the viewport and the final render. Next, let's add a material for the structure. So select the structure, switch to the material tab, and click the new button. I'm going to set the base color to blue. I'm also going to set the metallic value to 1. Next, right click the structure and select Shade Smooth. For the light source, I'm going to keep the point lamp and set the power to 5000. Now I'll press 7 on the number pad for top view. Then I'll press Shift D to duplicate and move the duplicate over here. Let's also set the background color, so switch to the World tab and set the color to black. This animation is going to be 250 frames long, so I'm going to keep the end value set to 250. This is the final rendered animation after setting up the camera view. This is rendered using the Cycles Render Engine with 32 render samples, and I also use denoising to clean up the noise. If you don't know how to use denoising, then you can watch my video on the topic. I'll put a link to it in the video description. For those that may not know how to render an animation, I'll put a link to a video for that as well. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.